Because it feels like my question mark would have been if Yugi, does Yugi look comfortable or not? And like, yeah, his stats the other day were not great, but Bled also highlighted that kind of in private, that there was like some good plays that he made that made it look like he was really part of the team, which is kind of what they want out of him more than anything else. And I think if, if he's in that comfort zone, I feel very confident in Astralis. All right, good to know. Well, talking of confidence, look at North in this pistol on the CT side. They decide to go parading down middle and they are met by a booby trap. A Yugi trap? It was a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on, I need to click <laughs> so, uh, Sometimes Yugi is you, like, you activated you. my trap card, right? <laughs> yeah. There yeah, we go. Yeah. All right. Magic cylinder. Magic Cylinder for, returns the damage. Bottomless Trap Hole. Oh my gosh. I think I got banned in tournament. Uh, you can only actually play one. It's a limited one, card. Yeah. Right, limited. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, before we continue to reveal our true nature, let's focus back on Counter-Strike. <laughs> it is the 3v3. We did get a chance to catch our breath, seeing as, you know, both teams kind of clash at the bottom of mid. Both teams peel off from one another. And now... They're throwing utility back over towards Arch. So a smoke grenade to deny any library vision. That bomb goes into the depths of the bomb site real deep. That bomb's planted in the back. Now, obviously, Device keeping his eyes on the potential for an apartment's flank. But I think once Zipex sees the numbers coming up short, this should confirm to the T's that maybe Device doesn't have to watch it. But I eat my words because one goes back and peeks into boiler, so now they know they're pinched. These counter terrorists on short are, are in a real pickle. But luckily, Cajun's grenade kind of alleviates a little bit of pressure here. Gade whips back round, taps into the head of Device. <gasps> Bombs oh. planted for Zipex, and he gets the diffuser off of it. There is no kit on the play. A 10-second stick. That one frag from Zipex should have, could have, may have been enough. You hold your breath. Oh! oh! And North are gonna steal it. Cajun Big B gets oh. the defuse, and the CTs start off well. Hopefully, it was the air strafe that got him to the bomb that made the difference. I'm hoping. Man, that was a very, very close round. Very close indeed. A good uh, retake, as you mentioned. North were in a pickle. They were getting flanked, and they knew it. But Astralis knew that they were flanking, and so they didn't have to overcommit. So, Astralis were able to control every engagement and then still lost. So a very, very nice round from North to come back from. One of the most confusing situations you can be in trying to retake the A side. Never fun, not even on a pistol. Props to Cajun as well in that clutch, not only getting to the defuse, but remember that they, they kind of put Zipex into that problematic situation because the grenade kill is what started the 3v3 to the 3v2 man advantage. Obviously, remember, Gade, he's got to flick around 180 and tap the, the head of device as he exits boiler. So not an easy pistol to close. But seeing as at one point in that same round, North were at the bottom of B, completely wrapped around and, and kind of boxed in, I think they avoided what could have been dire straight. Regardless, whoa, oh. hold on. What Magis. a flash. Yeah. Peeks with it, goes ahead and topples two players. So North with the economic advantage potentially slipping. We've still got that triple AK set up for Astralis. They're going to continue to trudge along towards A, Cajun B. What can you do? He doesn't see the player over towards Library. Come on, loses Dupree. his head. Yeah, and follow-up damage. The oh, Deagle is dirty. AZ nowhere to be found as Astralis. They don't play by the rules. They rob back the momentum after pistol. They probably still get the bomb plant, but Dupree getting the kill means they don't even lose a player, which they certainly would have lost as they got onto the A site. And maybe he could have gotten a kill and fallen back into halls and made it a very, very difficult round, a bad plant location, the threat of halls that you can't use. And instead North end up with only a single player left. What an amazing play by Dupree. And you know, what was crazy. Even crazier than that was that I saw a moto smoke come out. So how did Dupree even see the halls? I think it was clear. It was just over top because on Cajun screen, you could see Dupree's head move by and, and either he didn't see it because he's so focused on short or he realizes that because players are going to come up short a second later, maybe that was for the oh, better. Oh, that's what it was. Oh, uh, the smoke hadn't popped. Yeah. Okay. So he just, that was the last second he could have connected that shot. If he doesn't get it on the first, then I think Cajun's given a chance to mow down some bodies on short, but that's not the world we live in, Mo.
We move forward. One, one, all the guns for Astralis, M4 and, included. And for people who aren't aware, Magisk is calling now. I think that's true. We know that. Yes. Um, uh, Yugi, Yugi mentioned that yesterday. And, and so, you know, good play there. Very simple CS. You get two kills lane, you go, you go lane to A. That's, that's it. They had Dupree go to cut off rotators because those guys were late because they were holding deep banana, which was telegraphed by the smoke that came down. And then Dupree knows he can make a ton of progress. And that's why he was able to see halls that quickly. And that's why he ran in the first place. Basically skipped out all the angles, cubby, into CT spawn, in library, and just went to help his teammates secure the site first and foremost because they, they thought there should be at least one more person there. But you really don't want to overplay, the... overcomplicate a situation like that and try to wrap arch with everybody or even go B uh, when the rotates are so far away. Smoke destined for CT spawn. Should allow a device to keep his eyes over on site, but remember AZ is boosted and Kristu looks to uh, set him up. Pistol tries to push through. That grabs both players' attention, but Magisk will save the day. Denies any kills as Device is lucky to be standing on nine. And obviously with North on the entire opposite side of the map, there is going to be no further casualties for now. My opinion, Madge is the best B entry in the world for Inferno. I, I've seen him do stuff that you just cannot explain. Uh, he beats out every crossfire. He's able to like kill a CT guy and the quad guy, pinpoint precision, through a smoke, through flashbangs, you know, it can be literally Dunkirk in the front of the B site and Magic will, Magic will find a way to get two kills. That's how good he is. I mean, this was just an eco round, but I'm sure we'll see more of that. As you mentioned, you know, he was punching at it, at or above his weight the other, yesterday on Inferno as well. Yeah, something above a 1.2 HLTV rating by the, by the end of the map. I believe 23 frags. So he was up there. What's another opinion of yours, Mohan? Give me one quick. I mean, a pineapple belongs on pizza, and anybody who eats boneless wings is also a boneless human. You can put a stamp on that. Little bits of utility picked up here by North. A single frag grenade, a single smoke, some upgraded pistols, just to be fancy. But uh, our expectations are set similar to what we saw last round. Astralis, huge advantage, and this time even more so because the B bomb site's completely open. Why wouldn't you walk into a free site? No tells just yet. But it looks like uh, North tried to sneak into the wrong house party. Astralis, the cool kids, they've decided we're gonna be. Uh, we're gonna have the block party over at B, and you're not gonna get the invitation. They got Michael Scotted. Yikes! I know you've been watching. Speaking of uh, parties, you've been watching the office. So, yeah, I, I finished. I finished the the last season like, like a couple months ago. So I'm. I've. I've just destined myself back to to now rewatching it all over again. Yeah, that's over definitely what it's all about. Just over again. and over again. Yeah. I recommend watching Dwight. Uh, I, for I forgot his name, his actor's name, but he goes and uh, quizzes Billie Eilish on The Office trivia, and Ooh. it's and she nails it. She's and she has a um, she figured she she knows the answers to some stuff I did, had no idea was even a possibility. So that, that's a cool one. I recommend people go and watch. Clean round here from Astralis. Not a single death. Again, voided all of their enemies. I think uh, you know there's a place where north don't even try to look for kills because they give up kill rewards but if they even had killed one player it probably would have been worth it they just unfortunately didn't do that they obviously are not very favored once the bomb goes down to try to find exit frags which is usbs well they have better chances here mohan because we have weapons across the board so as i deal with billy eilish songs being stuck in my head thanks to you <laughs> i can focus on counter strike to clear that out We've got smokes exchanged at the top of banana already. We've got two CTs close to it. There's a gap here. AZ, you gotta be cautious, my man. He's gonna peek off of his nade. Great headshot close versus Yugi. And because of that north, they should be able to just cheat back into the bomb site. They don't want to lose HP to the fire, so they're lucky to wait it out and then retreat in a 5v4. A very nice position to be in. This is what banana is all about, literally. 
You throw everything in the kitchen sink on banana to get some unconfirmed damage and hopefully a kill, and then you can peel back. Rotations are extremely static now. Astralis pressing their faces against this final choke point. Once they turn this corner, it's completely on, and we'll decide if they are going to commit. They do have the bomb stationed up here. Device behind the half wall prompting a smoke. Dupree will send one too, and this might elicit a response in terms of counter utility, but the T's are coming in. Full commitment, full defense. Chris do all. Oh, he had a corner to play with. He still manages the dink. Incredible. Alive is Magist, but barely. Bomb plant on the other side of the smoke. AZ, oh. ambitious on the spam, but now because he's stuck on the reload device, he will take that any day of the week. Just runs right through, finds that timing, and convinces North to walk away here. They had to wait to get these guns to begin with, and now they will wait so that they can keep them in the next. And opt two M4s to be moved into round five. 4 1, the strong start as Astralis take a lead on the T side. I always imagine if you're like a new pro, one of the most terrifying things. Listen, we have X ray on, okay? To be in the server that X ray on versus a B site take from Astralis or like any of the top teams on Inferno on the B site, is you, you've got to feel like a deer in headlights to see all of these different nuanced variations of executes come over, have a Molotov land at your feet, a Molotov to catch you on your fallback, a flash to make sure you're blind in this specific position. It's hell, you know? And I think only experience can cure that. And I think, you know, Christu is going to really uh, have his wits it will be really put to wit's end trying to come up with ways to stop them or to at least get one or two kills if that and Astralis I think it's in their best interest to really put his feet to the fire and uh, keep attempting that as long as they are given the ability to get up banana but there's a 5v4 that goes in their favor because the b-site trades are not there oh missed shot MSL with a chance at a 5v4 but uh, gets away from him just slightly ooh device <gasps> what the oh, heck? Device nearly gifted a kill. AZ, he had flubbed the jump onto the second box of oranges, so he tried to come back around for it. This time just throws himself into the full open, so thank goodness for North that Christu can trade, but he has another at bat. That's Magisk with a headshot swiftly, quickly, calling for Bomb to come over. And by laying down the smoke, he has forced the hand of Cajun B into construction. Ooh, seen and not swept away, but falling to 50 HP. Cajun's just trying to get himself out of this position. His teammates are so far removed. The bomb is down here on this B site. Don't forget that Dupree is still in the apartment. So these last two counter terrorists could also lose their lives. Look at MSL haphazardly hopping around the pit. Luckily, he has Gade to save him. And they know, but they know both are there. So Astralis immediately leave the site. They might actually get to a position in time to try to do some damage. Smartly, North have pulled out to try to take these fights early. That's a good move from MSL. You know, low HP would have definitely died there in the pit. Teaser on the hunt. Gade's in a new position as well. Yugi, does he clear it? Doesn't seem likely. Oh. oh one. And... Certainly gets traded, yeah. Okay, so we look at the money. That does affect the buy. That could have been a full buy. One person could have half-armored if they wanted to. I think they still might try it. Just have a single pistol. Or they save for the full buy. Both respectable decisions, of course. You know, hey. you kind of just use your discretion. <laughs> nice little love tap to start the round. Actually, MSL holds on to the op. I wonder if it would have been not not such a bad play to just go ahead and, and full buy with the rest of your teammates, but the op can still win. You can still win no matter how many guns you have. That's why we played the game. Not every time. MSL. It'd be stupid if you'd win every time, but sometimes you can win with the pistols. That's the dream we sell you. That's why you love Counter-Strike, sorry. It's okay. Flashbang piece up here towards the top of middle, but there are a lot of pistols trained forward. That's bomb thrown down for a moment. Another attempt here, and oh boy, Astralis starting to throw away a round versus just the pistol players. We said that the op could win the round, Launders. You forgot about that crossfire setup over on A. The pistols prevail for now. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Still. They will be able to maybe get back into control. Astralis, shoulder to shoulder here. Dupree and Zipex versus four. Okay. What do they do? That's the most curious part. Moto Smoke comes out. 
try to isolate the players in the site. They know there's two. They, they gotta know. Yep. Simple crossfires here. One in the pit. He smoked out and flashed as well. Chance there. Moment. Zipix gets the trade and they have identified the second player in pit. Yeah, they really want to get that pit player out of here. Gade, he has to just kind of tuck into the depths of the corner. He's calling for the rotation to come in as quick as can be. Dupree trying to look forward, but he gets popped by MSL. Now the off comes into the equation. Zipex on the clutch goes down and North with a robbery. One off, four pistols, and a great crossfire on the top of A site to make that one happen. Three rounds the lead still for Astralis, but giving away a freebie. Yeah, nice shots. There was actually a chance there if Dupree hadn't swung out any wider. Use that wall as cover, force Gade to peek if he wanted to. I mean, they could they could plant without Gade's permission there in the back of the site, but they wanted to get the kill first. So that's the bet that they made for themselves. Would have still been difficult, obviously. And then, oh my God, he's so nuts at this. I feel like it was just a continuation spray and they ran head first into his bullets. Probably didn't even realize he had killed the first guy yet, but uh, no chance in trading. And I mean, this is, that's like a round, right? You get two kills on banana with a minute 25 left over. Yeah. That's, uh, huh. Sorry guys, we need to readjust ourselves. You know, we're, we're out here, we're out here telling the story. We're writing the script. We get that pistol round of a robbery that kind of makes things seem a little up in the air, but then as if it had never happened, Astralis right back in control. Magisk. Fiery 2K at the top of banana there. North Mohan, what do you make of that 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 egregious aggression as they flood down banana? You know, before I jump the gun, I would say I would like to look at the nades again because I think what's important is like, did they have supporting grenades to allow them to peek properly there or did something miss? Because it didn't seem like Magus was threatened at all when they went out for the peek. So I'm wondering if they if they had naded logs mollied behind him and then wanted to get him in that position to fight, but just failed the fight, or if they had missed a Molotov that was supposed to land at his feet. Because, you know, a Molotov in the front and, the back and behind him, he could have potentially died playing that same spot if they had thrown a different set of utility. But I'm not gonna say the utility they threw was wrong, I'm just wondering what they chose to do. Maybe they peaked a bit early as well, before damage had come in, or their nades had missed. There's a ton of th small things that could have gone wrong. Um, but. Certainly, it's not a bad idea in and of itself to peek down banana, right? We, we all know that. It's just, did they use the correct utility to compromise the spots they wanted to, or did something miss, or did they not have money for a Molotov and then made a bad play? That, that much, I'm not sure. Well, regardless, it's behind us. It we is. Come into this one, take a little pause, take a breath, collect ourselves, everybody stand up. Reach for the sky, touch your toes, breathe through the nose. Wow, this is nice because yoga has been closed down, obviously. So now I, I feel like I'm in my yoga class right now. You are my I'll yoga. I'll tell you who's not relaxed, and that is North, because they are in the server with Astralis. We have the benefit of just being the spectator's eye. North, they're getting rammed by Astralis at the moment. Still though, back in with a full-fledged purchase. One of the better chances for North. They don't go for the hyper-aggression down banana, but they are still exchanging grenades at this moment. The minute 15 mark and they peel back. Ooh, MSL. Yeah, he was spotted on the fallout. Dupree's been lurking halls almost every single round here. He's gonna be the one to try to entry. Knows kind of where MSL is playing, and this is great. This is something I love to see, re-aggression from MSL, to call out the the fake immediately, too. Look how much information they have. They can call for a rotate. Even though Dupree is throwing this utility, they've evacuated mid. He can actually even come out for this kill. That's beautiful. Nice. And 3B, Astralis know exactly what the rotates have, have, uh, have come, and they're worried now, but are kind of have their hands forced. forced. Yep, they're going to have to try and trudge through this. They're met with a little bit of counter utility. Chris Du takes the high ground on the boost. Now the coffin peak from Cajun B. Bomb down, follow up damage. Excellently done there from MSL. Calling the shots and making that play happen. He is excavating the construction site. He's digging for relics and information. And he finds a treasure trove as he peeks down middle. Gets the kill onto Dupree. I think on top of it all, not only is he able to enable that 
that that three man stack up on the B site, but but cutting off Dupree and preventing any sort of last second rotation back to the A site with 20 seconds. I mean, you, we saw that moment on the top of Banana where Astralis kind of had to accept their fate and commit, knowing they couldn't adjust back. Had Dupree survived, yeah. they still have two options. Dude, he's the freaking five head. He's the finisher of the round here at the turn of the bracket. Wow, they're turning up the pace though. Astralis running through a Molotov into a flash Cajun, but he had a glimpse, I think, was able to stop Dupree. This puts everything to a, to a hold right now. Magic will now try to make up ground. Fails the entry as Cajun covers him perfectly. Yeah, they're charging into this head strong, trying to spam the walls in the wild. Gade in pit, can't get that second hit. Zipex, 19 health at the end of this one. <gasps> wow, he follows through the smoke and through the edge of the wall. That finally creates the space for Yugi, who had been so desperate to get that kill on site. Zipex tries, he might, has such little health to work with that North survive with two, pick up their AWP, and more importantly, cut that lead down to two rounds now as well. Six for Astralis, four for North, and trimmings for Astralis. They're gonna have to bottom out their bank account here in round 11. It's not as if the flash wasn't good into Arch. It, it just, it hit as soon as Dupree came out. There's a small timing window. You can't really blame Dupree for jumping out at that moment. Just occasion as we saw in the brand new kill feed, he was blind, but that simply wasn't enough. And he was such a, a key component to a fast rush like that, where they know they're gonna eat utility on their way to A. That's an opening they'll happily take. Looks like Astralis might just follow through. Feeling this ace sight, Gade gets his eyes up on Pit. That's great timing for him. And he died there. There's a world where Short is completely exposed, but Astralis are again gonna have to slow this one down. They've got four players ahead of them here on this ace sight. The defense looking strong, AZ, caught playing with grenades. Chris Dew, double peeking into two, but manages one kill nonetheless. Ready for the repeak is Zipex. Now that route towards B is open. Bomb still floating behind him on Arch. Not going to be cut off by Cajun as he doubles down on the commitment towards A. So both Astralis and North recognize that options are open for the offense. They're in the demilitarized zone right now. And there's a warrant for them. Look out for the landmines. Yeah, to sit here. Don't back up into any landmines. There's good... There's kind of a good excuse for them to sit and wait to see if the A rotators get scared or how to see how the B player responds. But B player is alone. So they're seeing that he's playing passive now. MSL makes the correct play. This is basically just asking for a retake. But look how the retake rotate comes in. They can't go through CT as easily anymore because they're terrified that someone's staying to lurk. Looking for that. Ooh. Oh, ho, ho. That absolute rock solid info that the second player is on B. MSL is going to creep back into the angle. Yugi playing a dangerous game right now, but the smoke denies his route. He was thinking maybe he could fall back into construction. Now he's going to need these crisp AK headshots, and he starts off with the first one. Hits oh. the second. MSL's low. New oh, Jersey. Yugi! Seven rounds for Astralis off of the back of the 1v3 clutch. Yes, man. I want nothing more than Yugi to be comfortable in this brand new jersey, and it is looking good on him. Black and red's the man's colors. One, two. And if he had gotten that spray transfer onto MSL to kill both number two and three at the same time, I may have just gotten up and left. But uh, he goes for the readjustment, MSL low HP, headshot regardless. So just crisp rifle work for Yugi. And if we can say anything about him standing in for Glaive, huge shoes to fill, by the way, for just all of Astralis. Oh, Ooh, enormous clown shoes. Clown yeah. shoes. Yeah, it's if cool this guy, to see Yugi succeeding in a role that, that we don't expect him to be doing. Here's the nickname I want for Yugi if he turns into a superstar on Astralis. I want to call him the New Jersey Devil. All right. Why? If you don't know the Sorry, reference, yeah, yeah. that's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Someone will know. Great hockey team. Uh, <laughs> that's about where we fall flat. That's got to be Speaking of which. Oof. The main actor is gone. Little smoke, little flash, little push. Oh, the double, the double oranges. Careful. 
Careful, no one's checking this. AZ. <gasps> Blaze three? Nope, just the second. Dupree able to get his gun back into control. This is going to be costly, perhaps for Astralis. They've lost that man advantage. They were looking good in the post plant, looking good for the post plant, I should say. And now it's on Zipex and Dupree, but they've cut down the numbers two to the two. MSL again with that op coming in from Banana Side. So Yugi pulled it off last round. This time it's up to Dupree. He is committed on the back of Dark all the way in the depths. He welcomes North to get their feet onto the bomb site. He hears them moving forward. He's been confirmed. MSL throws himself into the stream of gunfire, but no problem. North trade, North defuse, and North take five. Just the right amount of trigger discipline there for AZ to hold on to it long enough. Not too long that uh, he's made a fool of. Someone swings on him. Just long enough that he gets spotted, but lets them cross in. Has a player going for the defuse as well. Nicely done. And the extra damage as well on the bomb planter, even though he doesn't kill him. It's worth his waiting hold. So overall, nice hold. And um, that's a spot of sunshine they've needed at the B site in specific. So Strahl's had a great time entering on this part of the map. Oh, okay. Rec 9 knocks down... <laughs> Hi. Oh my God. Uh, nice to meet you. See you never. Poor Magis. Pulling one out of nowhere. Yugi follows suit, and just like that, another round. I mean, okay, the Tech Nine's back. We've all confirmed this. Everybody go equip it now. Rip CZ. I feel like this is how I play when I have an Uber Eats delivery downstairs. <laughs> they are moving apparently so Astralis quick. Have places to be. Yeah, they are not wasting any time at all. All right. That one kind of comes out of nowhere, too. I, I didn't expect such a pace, but I mean, we, we saw the tools that they were working with, limited purchases for Astralis, so... I feel like since Dad's not home, they're, like, calling super quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like they're, they're having yeah, so yeah. much fun with it. They're jumping Glaive. on the beds. Glaive's probably somewhere... Ports. Glaze probably somewhere watching this, shaking his head, going, oh, I wish that didn't work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's gonna come back to a whole new Astralis. <laughs> Actually, I hope, I hope, seriously, that Glaive is nowhere near Counter-Strike at the moment and that he is enjoying his first few days. Oh, yeah, take we all time, know he's man. worked hard for it, man. He already beat the game. Take as much time as you need. Yep, come back and speed run it again. But uh, listen, we saw Astralis work magic with their lackluster buy. North decide to put themselves in the same situation. We've got that op again for MSL, but a FAMAS on Gade. And, and, and don't write this round off. You'd be a fool to do so because the last time North were in this exact situation, they flexed that brackets control on the A site in order to take the round. That's a good point. Smoke plumes here in the archway. Ah, oh, as the smoke comes up, the vice goes down. They, that bagged a flick out of, uh, of MSL, but it oh. wasn't too much. Wow, the fade, the Iverson grenade from behind the half wall. Fades back, perfectly planted. Chris Dew's in the corner. Zipex about to barrel. Nope. Gonna say barrel stuff him, but Chris Dew makes the first move. Luckily for Astralis, many players there to enable the trade. But can Gade come up big? He decides to get curious in the apartments, and that one's going to cost him Dupree, crisp headshots, and that's all they needed. The kind of final nail in the coffin at that A bomb site. Plants theirs. It's all theirs. That's a ninth for Astralis on the offense. Dude, time AZ to kill is so hiding. low. It's kind of like when, and you know, you watch your share of fights, right? Like UFC and stuff, you know, finding yeah. a sparring opponent that is as good. Like if you have to fight John, John I mean, John, obviously freaking cheater. But, you know, if you have to fight someone as good as him, you have to find somebody, opponent that can match up to them to get proper practice. And if you like look at the time to kill on top of the fact that they're a strollist with all the strategy and fixings as well. It's so hard to say that North could have done anything about that. You know, Dupree coming out of the halls, you have two or three frames before you're dead every time Dupree sees you. It's seriously like hitting his first bullet every single time. Device hitting his first frame tech nine shot at the top of Banana. Magist hitting that fallback instant headshot. I mean, it's really difficult. You're working with extremely small percentages. And unless North are getting like the kind of practice um, that can that can show them this level of aim on top of everything else, that's what really makes it hard, I mean, to come in and play against a team of this caliber. 
quick note while we have your attention and you mentioned UFC, make sure you guys go check out the uh, their YouTube. We've got uh, Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor 1. Oh, dude, posted. I love they upload those old fights. It's so cool. One of the best fights ever. Stockton. But Stockton. <laughs> I can't finish the quote. <laughs> yeah. <get> fired. <laughs> a final attempt for North here, working with the exact same buy nearly as what they had in the last, but we've added an MP9 into the mix, a different recipe, and hopefully for North, a different result. They do have three members of the defense over here towards this B site, but Astralis, the man advantage up close, four of them sitting here on banana ready for the execute sit and wait so much time burned off the clock you free still in a very comfortable spot holding in the halls the boost is here they're going to give it up actually and as we can see inferno is on level ground basically all over the map so it's a really hard map to be hop run off of because of that and also allows you to wow. uh, drop silently as well holy I'd be frustrated if I was MSL. Two moments of timing there at the bottom of mid where Zipex just shows a shoulder. MSL gets a little excited, but it's over towards the A site that this bomb is actually going to go. Device, he was the solo commitment at B. Dupree can't manage over on Balk. So there is an opening here for North to try and lock it down. He gets into the pit and he calls for reinforcements. North, they sprint over through their spawn, but Zipex has him gone. So it's entirely on the retake now for North. They have a single smoke, a single flash, but deep pit fix control for Yugi and a chance to move for Zipex. They're both going to go into pit. Oh, they're going to start spamming some shots through the smoke, looking to deal that damage. Oh. They know that North can get close. North actually starting to get footing on the bomb site. They're clamoring over the boxes, and it's not prevailing so far. Two kills back for Astralis and a clutch attempt for Cajun. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you. Or at least, oh, I wasn't talking about you, Momo. Oh, man. Holy moly, look at the odds. 26 to infinity. But they, they just, they just, they don't, they don't give you anything if you bet Astralis. You're just not allowed to. <laughs> that is as skewed as can be, folks, but uh, understandably so. I mean, a uh, hell of a half on the T side for Astralis. 10-5 the advantage, and I would be shocked if they don't let off the gas pedal here. We saw it kind of happen on Vertigo once they had momentum, and history tends to repeat itself. Perhaps. Dupree? Oh, Dupree super Another. clean, Mr. Clean with hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wow. know, man. Yeah, I Get can't. Get Clorox. You're in. <laughs> <laughs> just don't drink it. Magic erase. Ooh, another one. I just love pistol rounds because we get these one tap headshots. I know, right? You know, why buy? Why do people buy body uh, armor? All these. There's all a the lot of all the kills you're going for. A lot of talk for around that. the economy and the and the nature of Counter Strike's rounds now and and how you know we have more gun rounds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But, uh, you know, are we going to change to MR12? Who knows what happens? But one thing I never want to lose, Launders, is these beautiful pistols. Yeah, I agree. I mean, maybe, you know what might be cool is, it, is if they gave you some kind of utility that you could sort out on your team, like two smokes and like two and a, a few flashes that you could right. put yeah, yeah. on, like a, on like teammates. A like you could choose for your teammates for whoever grabs it so people could buy armor and then start from there. So the pistol rounds are also a bit more tactical because I think that's the one folly of them is they can be somewhat random because they're mostly just about aim. And if they solve that problem by making the rounds a little bit more tactical, we could still have the fun of like, you know, the whole round being pistol headshots, which is beautiful and but fun also to watch. With big brain prowess. Exactly. I like your idea. Pitch it. Okay, here's the Molotov and here's the MP9, ripping flesh from bone. A little bit of a barbecue up here on Banana. And Gade, well, he stayed back. A late invitation by the time he arrived. The grill's been emptied. He's been blown away. Mm. If the MP9 wasn't enough, the frag would have been 12-5. Seven rounds of an advantage for Astralis. And the party now gets started as North come in with the rifles. Yeah, that was the cookout from hell. But it was actually the MP9s to get all the kills, which is awesome. So they got lots and lots of money for that. Now they'll keep the MP9s because why not? They're winning. They can win with MP9s. The more kills they get with the MP9s, the more money they make. It's a win, 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 win. Except that they lose. That's when the, the loss comes in. But apart from that, it's right. win, 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 win. 
Grenades upon grenades. Upon grenades being thrown up and down. Whoop. Whoop. Yep, that one's not. Whoop. <laughs> turned, uh, it turned, it turned on them, man. It's an anime betrayal of the Molion B. Regardless of the success of said Molotov, CTs still forego that banana control, mm -hmm. deciding to put Yugi Dude. and Zipex back on boost. They have two MP9s to hold B. And the yeah. worst part is it's not even that bad. We'll see what happens. The boost could be good. They'll have a bait kill here. And if if somebody doesn't clear the boost, I'm going to take a second to explain why. Let's see if it happens. Oh, I would... <laughs> I was waiting Wait, for the if explanation. It happens, if it happens, it happens. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. I'm like, instructions unclear. But they wait. We're gonna stave it off for the moment. We saw that quick rotate from Magisk, and he's still flirting around CT spawn, so... Oh, the next decides to fall off of the boost. Bams the smoke, and so far, so good, because Yugi gets into the mix, but he can't hang on to the sheer numbers of North. Pile driving through those smokes off of the flash. Zipex goes. Magisk's able oh, to get one as well. Yeah, the bomb still planted. Oh, it was after, sorry, yeah. Chris Dew lurking around through Arch. Oh, Dupree stampeding through spawn, gives himself up. Now Chris Dew's gonna come around, fumbles around with the guns, but oh boy, if he dies, then that gives a chance for the retake if he hadn't dinked device down to just 11 because 19 HP combined, I don't think they chance this. No. That's gonna be North folks taking a sixth. Dude, it's nice of them to get these guys. They got like Toys R Us weapons, right? Like they're having fun just getting the kills that they get. They get away with two kills and they upgrade both their guns. So this is a totally one round here for Astralis. Like not not bad at all. Like this is where even when they lose, they've done a pretty good job. Majority deaths, upgraded two guns, um, you know, caused a bunch of havoc, you know, expelled a lot of utilities. So still a very good round for Astralis on top of having tons of money from the previous two rounds on top of the three kills from uh, SMGs on this round as well. So, yeah, but they, I think, so I don't know why Zipix fell off of that. It might have been, he might have accidentally fallen off of it, but they weren't going to clear it again. It's just because of the entry padding towards the site where I can't, I think it's Apex who um, I did the interview with. Actually, Whoa. put that to a pause. Trey Train up mid, Magisk looking oh. to stop it, does so much damage with the HE as well as the spray down and Dupree will he pick up the pieces. Well, he's trying to do that damage. He's got those players both wrapping and peeking up in oh, front. Oh, Zip. Oh, what? Oh, oh, oh. What? Yo! That was some Shroud Hello? versus Netcode guys type stuff. Uh, How is Zipex 22 and 9? Where did that third kill... Did he just tap through? Yeah. Oh. oh, I see. Oh, I see. I think he was, I think, okay, first of all, oh. I think if no one's standing in front, he gets the headshot on Glaive, which makes the shot as equally impressive. But then someone on top of that swings into the site who has like 22 HP and dies. Yeah, yeah. As Still collateral damage as well. Back. Yeah. Wild. This is just, I mean, that's just absolute tomfoolery. Shenanigans, riff rap. It's all just wild. And Astralis, fueled by Zipex and his godlike endeavors, just decides to charge down middle and destroy North. Any hope they had of making something happen with those Glocks taken away from them, Launders. Yeah. I want, I feel like I, this is a situation where I want Astralis' content team to make Zipix do a 2C slide so that I can have that GIF to use as a reaction to him having a round like that. How? He just, both of them. Like at that point, it's just unfair. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. A tough pill to swallow for North. They're kind of gagging on it at the moment, but at least they've come back in with a buy. So, I mean, if, if there was any uh, resetting afforded to them after that kind of a, of a moment, well, it was a short chance to catch their breath because of the nature of the eco, but they're back into the gun round. So it's all in the past. We have to put it behind us. As much as I want to dwell on it and replay it in my mind's eye, I look forward to New Horizons because Zipex is at bat yet again. And he's being challenged here on Arch side. Already yep. three players have managed their way past middle, but they've decided to double back. There is no commitment and no need to do so. 50 seconds remain. 
Looks like there was about to be some animals crossing, but they've... yeah, they actually do come back. Maybe want to try it again. Not a bad idea. Losing the guy bottom mid plus knowing devices here holding this long angle. And you want to save some of this utility for your execute. You probably all you want to do is get device back on the site and then yeah, not really go B after that. So Astralis can't rotate too heavily. They probably don't need to as well. Still unfavored situation here for North, but they've got enough nades at least for A. Dupree is going to stay tucked in the hidey hole. He pops up with Magus, both of which taking duels. Ah, oh, poor Chris, dude. He's plucked from the skies. Everybody seems to have died. Gade can't find any further footing. Astralis on 15. Four survivors here. I mean, a CT side that's looked just as commandeering as that first offensive half of theirs. They've been in control for the entirety of this series. If you guys are just tuning in, what you're watching now has been the tail of the tape for this entire BO3. Astralis, a step ahead of North, as they have been, seeing as they've not lost a map to this roster, this organization, since 2017. Yeah, it feels like we've only had like 40 some odd rounds. And last time they played was in, I think like 2019. So I don't even know which is, I mean, they've been pretty consistent overall. There's a period in there where they may have slipped a bit, but there's not really a version of Astralis between then and now that you would want to have played if you're north. But uh, yeah, clearly Astralis looks super good. Super good. Final attempt perhaps here, folks, is the A site yet again. Dupree is going to lay down that smoke. It's followed by a flashbang. So that kind of stutter steps their drop into the pit. Great spam <laughs> damage. Poor Gade hasn't even seen anything. Can't doesn't know where he way. is. Yeah, and Chris, dude, he's going to try to jump up over pit. Right into the line way. They can't find they the doorway, dude. Stuck. They're trying. Oh my goodness. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not north. Door stuck. That's the joke. And they have been turned away. So if they already struggled to find anything to happen over here on this A site, I think this one round kind of, uh, well, it's a good analogy for just what has been this series. Stuck at the door frame, struggling to get one foot through. Cajun B will attempt his best, charging at the smoke, swapping weapons. He's kind of lost inside of it. And Zipex, he can smell him. Breathing down their necks, trying to get this AK to connect. But he has to wait because bomb's been planted. It's still the 4v3. He's toying around the corners of construction. He's going to get rushed. I like the initiative here from North, trying to go on the offensive here, trying to keep the CTs uncomfortable in their retake attempt. But they throw forward their flash. MSL, 100 health. The last player with such HP comes swinging out from pit. He takes down two, just needs the last for the 1v3 clutch. He's going to tap that bomb. Magis, he's in the process of sticking it. Oh. And he is peeled away. North still alive for now. Well, they don't look overly enthusiastic, but why should they be? You know, they just barely closed that out and they've got a long way to go. But still, very nice round here from MSL, looking super clean with uh, an MP7 of all guns. And yeah, they almost, uh, they, they almost, that's kind of interesting how they like came back to be. I almost forgot what happened in the beginning of the round, but um, we already have to move into the next one because North want to move just as fast as Astralis do. Out onto Banana, Device does not want to peek into that Molotov. It looked like they were attempting to go for very aggressive Banana control. Correct Molotov from north in response to deny it up at Car. Christu gets a nice MAC-10 kill up in halls and Device is already down low. A wounded beast, still deadly. So north fighting to the very end. Got a little bit of work over towards the B site. Yugi, quick trade frag, steps out and blasts him away. Still, it's a man advantage for the T's though. North will be happy about that. And they're looking to sink their teeth back into the B site. The same place of which they prevailed in the last round. Just barely, of course. Took a big clutch from MSL. They've got that man advantage and devices low, tucked in the depths of this site. Yugi has a full belt of utility still to try and burn the clock. He's got another smoke. Molly on top of it. Device anticipating a CT peak, but the threat comes entirely from in front of him for now. Oh, oh. wow. He hits that shoulder <laughs> shot, but MSL, the head, and just like that, it's Yugi dead. The B bomb site burst open. 
disgusting. What a shot. Through through the corner of oranges. Maybe a pre-fire. Maybe he saw a little bit, a little shoulder. But it's all all those years of experience packed into one moment right there. Just a very nice shot. Um, no matter how how it came, if he saw it or not. Maybe we could catch the replay and see if uh, MSL had vision um, of the vice or if he had just pre-fired oranges. But right right in the dome, man. Right in the dome. They also stop that this kind of unfettered aggression towards Banana is working out kind of well for North. They did damage, plus stopped the aggressive peak, plus got another kill in halls with Christu with the MAC-10 of all things. So a few things are going quite well. Let's go North, run it back. Okay, he, he saw him a little bit, but didn't let him shoot, yeah. yeah. Nicely done. Remember that device was also, because of the potential for the CT peak, he had his crosshair fixated deeper, so he, he may have just given up what was enough of a shoulder for MSL to pull that one out. Mm. But Astralis will try yet again, forcing in with everything they can afford before they're going to have to start saving. It's not that lackluster. Deagle for device, MP9 on Dupree. Colt across oh. the other three, but Molotov at the feet of Zipex. He's got to have to duck back into the bomb site at 23 health. Who, who would you rather be? The T's or the CT's right now, based on that damage? Uh, CT's. CT's, okay. Because regardless of the damage, they still have seven match points. Right, that's true. The grand scheme of things, <laughs> that is ultimately the objectively good answer. Fair enough. Well played. North chilling. Waiting to serve it real cold. Trying to catch Astralis making mistakes. That's one of the most difficult things to do in Counter-Strike. Like you said earlier, you know, dad's not home. Glaive's not here. So maybe this increases. Actually, I take that back. Zonic's still behind them, I'm sure. I think he's I'd be home. more intimidated of him than Glaive. Yeah, he's much bigger. Very loud, booming voices, booming M4. Shots lined up here on mid. Hello, device. Long time no see, my friend. Three kills, going for the fourth. Looking to replicate what was that highlight reel moment on Vertigo, but it seems like Dupree could be the final hit. Seven seconds remaining here for Cajun. He's just gonna go ahead and plant that bomb. He has to. The three CTs all come